What's new? Okay. We have in stock and uh, nice, beautiful new photos of the official Raspberry Pi USB Type C power adapter for the Pi 5. This is a chunky, chunky power supply. Very beautiful. This is nice. We've got the black uh, plastic version. Um, this is power delivery. Wait, go back because the text is the important part. So it's power delivery. It's designed for the Pi 5, but it should work with any uh, Raspberry Pi computer. Um, and what's amazing is it'll give you a full five amps at five volts. Amazing. Up to 2.25 at 12 volts, three amps at nine volts, and uh, almost two amps at 15 volts. So, you know, good for the Raspberry Pi computer, which needs five at five amps. Um, but it's also good for a lot of other projects. You can also pick up one of our HUSB 238 uh, breakout boards if you want to extract the uh, 9, 15, or 12 volt power out of this. Um, but a nice chunky power supply, 27 watts max. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, next up. Next up, we have more square screens. This time, we have 480 by 480. We have already stopped. You're like, this looks just like the 4-inch display that you had before. That was 720 by 720. This is 480 by 480. So fewer pixels, but means like maybe you can draw faster. Okay, you don't need whole 720 by 720 pixels. We have a version without and with capacitive touch overlay. I'll show what they look like. I also show a demo on the overheads. So Let me unplug my incredibly loud beeper. So, yeah, folks said the noise cancellation got that. So uh, a little bit of a beep, but it worked out pretty good. It was unbelievably loud. Just believe me. Okay. So uh, this is the version without... Hold on. Let me bring this up here. Okay. Hold on. Sometimes stuff is so bright that it confuses it. Okay, this is the version without and the version with. So you see the this has a nice bezel over it. Um, and uh, this does not, but it's less expensive. Actually, this, this says 720 by 720, but it's not. Um, it has the RGB TTL 40 pin connector, uh, which works great with our Qualia board. Uh, make sure that whatever you're using to drive these displays has that RGB 666 pin out. And then this is just a quick, uh, touch screen demo so you got like the rainbow display and then I can I can draw like hearts and stuff and stars and moons and I don't know all sorts of shapes and stuff uh, so it's got a capacitive touch overlay on it with the FT6336 uh, I squared C um, touch controller so uh, yeah you'll want to drive it with a chip that can control RGB 666 displays in this case I'm using an ESP32 S3 but not everything is going to be able to um, yeah. run this many it looks really good in person but I know it it's, point. it's always tough to have a what is it like a TFT through a camera through a TFT through a camera so um, but it does look really good it's nice and bright uh, bright we have a photo added to the website that's um, nice and uh, uh, it's beautiful. So uh, we now have almost every square bar and round display that I ordered originally. So check those out. Um, many varieties to choose from. Yeah. You know, let me um, let me see which which photo you're talking about. This one. Here. Oh, you know, this is the only one that I didn't get into. Yeah, because it showed up. It was uh, right before uh, you did the show. Uh, yeah. You know that. So, but I have technology. You have technology. Yeah. There it is. There it is. That's what it looks like right here for me. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah. These are very beautiful IPS displays. Okay, next up. Okay, we've got a revision to the USB isolator. In addition to updating the silk screen, uh, it now has an SMT USB uh, type A connector, which works like we found it works really great and it makes manufacturing a lot easier. Um, so, yeah, we just updated this. Uh, we did a little bit of a revision to make this a little easier to manufacture. So. Uh, we also updated the, um, this is a, I think, universal. Yes, this is the universal thermocouple, so it does a KJMQTRFS, whatever, thermocouples um, through SPI, and it's a really great uh, thermocouple adapter, uh, shown here with this type uh, K uh, thermocouple. The update is, uh, now we've updated the silk screen a little bit, and it now comes term with terminal blocks pre-attached, uh, so you don't have to solder the terminal block anymore. Okay, next up. Okay, new, we've got um, the enclosure kit for the Memento camera. We're, we're slowly putting these in stock. I just finished the tester for these. An uh, open source Python powered camera. Can you believe it? Yes. So yeah, this, believe it. this kit comes with the back plate and the front plate. The front plate is also an LED ring, which I'll show in a moment. 
and it comes with some hardware as well. So this is go the overhead. This is a open source digital camera. So this is, you can see the camera um, board sandwich in between. Uh, so this is the LED ring uh, overhead, and then this cable I pulled out, but normally it would be tucked in, so it wouldn't yeah. be sticking out as much. But what's nice is that this can give you like cool LED effects, and it's an RGBW LED. Um, so if you give me a second, and this is the the back plate, it's just protective. So turn this on, and give it a second. It's like booting up. Beep 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 beep. And then, oh, why is it? oh you know what? My battery's dying. One second. Battery's dead. Yeah, too many live demos. Okay, sorry. Back. Uh, I just plugged it in. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. It's uh, yeah. Battery's uh, battery's no longer dead. Um, hold on. But then it was like you you had your battery die. This I can tell it's a really a live demo. Beep. Okay. Now we're back. We're back in business. Okay. So uh, let's go to the LED level. Okay, so now you can see I've got green. Yeah, maybe point it up to the camera so folks. Well, see. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Right? Look at that. Yellow, that great. red, purple, blue. And this is, of course, each color can be different, but, you know, to make it um, uniform, it's all the same color. And, of course, rainbow mode, so you can cool, do cool photos with uh, rainbow effects. And uh, white, so it's got natural white LEDs. And so if you're trying just to illuminate a subject or do like, you know, close up photography, um, a good ring light is of course essential. So this gives you eight LEDs, um, eight LED lights. Um, and then the natural white light will give you like the most, um, it'll look best for people, for humans. So yeah, yeah demo. Like and uh, different, this is not even the brightest, it's like the lowest brightness. So it doesn't blow out the camera uh, yeah. lens. But um, yes, this is the camera it, hardware kit. It has a good um, hand feel too, like holding this in your hand. It's like, oh, this is I like this is a little camera that I that I can not a disposable camera, but it's like it's a fun camera because it's not your phone that's telling you everything terrible that's going on in the world at the same time. It's like a little fun camera. Yeah. So anyways, um, we like it. OK, uh, let's go on to the next thing. OK, next up, we have a camera case from Flerk. Um, yeah, that's the name. Uh, Flerk, they do, um, they've done a lot of stuff with like infrared control like, and what did I say? You said camera case because we, we were just looking at a camera. Sorry. It's a Raspberry Pi 5 case from yeah. Flerk. They've done infrared and um, like TV applications for the Raspberry Pi. And they also have these beautiful cases. So this is for the Pi 5. Not a lot of uh, pieces for the Pi 5. Uh, there'll be yeah. an official one soon, but um, this one's nice. It has passive cooling um but that's only if you keep the top on i think if you move the top um you no longer have past cooling you use the active cooler um it's like a beautiful aluminum case with like yeah. little silicone nubbins and the price is really good so if you have a raspberry pi 5 and you want to protect it um this case is wonderful next up hacker tools for hackers hacker tools for hackers okay so this is the nugget it's a cat themed esp32 s2 you know oled hacking tool which has like some cool apps like you know like the de de authors and um ducky pad and and other like uh yeah i don't remember the entire list of um capabilities so it's kind of you know it's people like oh we know how does this compare to a, fl a flipper this is not a flipper it's going to be a much simpler no. this thing. is like fl wifi. flipper training wheels it's, flipper training. it's a good tool in your hacker tool chest just one thing to keep in mind like all these hacker tools you should be an expert because you might not be able to get a you know step by step i'm a beginner yeah it's definitely you know there there are some guides but it's it's you're, you're definitely good. for hackers who are like oh i i want i these are projects that i you know yeah. build myself but i want a cute toy version that yeah you don't want to read the manual anyways yeah it's enclosed okay. I mean, there are tutorials but you'll you know the the codes on github you'll have to upload it yeah there aren't step-by-step -step tutorials for all that there's like a web uploader but you still have to go find the binaries um that said i think it's like a very cute little toy and yeah um, we want to support the hacker community that keeps making hardware um i think i met this person and hope last year yes okay um let's go to the start of the show besides our team lady our community all the customers everyone who makes this go it is the usb host featherwing 
that's the code of the day, which is host feather. So this is um, using a chip that's actually, you know, it's, I want to say long in the tooth, but it's a tried and true. The Max 3421E has been used for USB host shields for a very long time. And we've been doing more stuff with USB host. And one of the challenges with USB host is not a lot of chips have USB host support. Um, there's a lot of chips that have, that you can make the main USB port act as USB host, but then you lose the main, like they don't have two ports. You only have one. And then when you swap in between the two, it's going to be a pain. Um, for the RB2040, we made the USB host feather and um, you can do that on the RP2040, but what if you want to use uh, you have the ESP32 S2, or you want to use your SAMD51 or the NRF52840 or other chips that, like I said, they don't have a secondary USB port. That's where this chip comes in. So this, again, it's tried and true, and it's been around for like a decade or more. Over SPI, it provides a USB host interface. And what's really neat is TAC, uh, who developed Teeny USB and works with Adafruit, has added support to Teeny USB for the Max 3421E. It's sort of like as, as a native back end. So for chips that have Teeny USB support, like the SP32 S2 and S3, RP2040, SAMD chipset, NR52s, if they have Teeny USB support and they can use the Teeny USB Arduino library, you can now have USB host work with it and it works really great. So you've got keyboard and mouse and mass storage and CDC uh, serial input. Um, you know, it's a, a low cost way of adding USB host without having like a separate chip that, well, that's a separate, a separate microcontroller that could do um, the interfacing. So um, check out the TeenUSB library for some of the demos that we've got. I've been using um, the USB host mode in TeenUSB for a couple months now to do all of our programming and it's great. I'll say you're not going to get super hyper speeds because it's going through SPI, but you definitely can add keyboard, mice, um, disk drive. You can connect it to a USB serial converter, like an FTDI chip or a CP2104 or, you know, native USB if you want. Um, could be in interesting for hacking or like making more complicated projects that use off the shelf USB peripherals. And that is new products for this week. New, new, new. 